Arnold Hertog and his wife Huguette have always loved tending their garden in the small Flemish town of St. Amans, not far from Brussels. But the garden hasn't always looked like this. In 1998, the couple were told that their home, along with more than 100 neighbouring houses, was sitting on an environmental time bomb. It was discovered that the earth was contaminated with poisonous compounds, including arsenic and mercury. 24 years on the manier, and we believed in that. We were not sure we were going to our career had stopped under one single day. The houses in St. Amand's had been built in the 1970s on the site of a former tannery and fertilizer factory. Over decades, industrial residues had leached out into the ground beneath the two sites. A lot less was known about soil contamination at that time, both in Belgium and in many other parts of Europe. Due to growing concern in Flanders in the 1990s, soil tests were carried out in St. Amand's and the authorities were horrified by what they found. Arsenic levels were 400 times the permitted amounts for a residential area. Lead and mercury, 100 times too high. The potential long-term risks were considered too great. So after consultations with the residents, and despite the disruption involved, the Flemish environmental authorities considered the only acceptable solution was to remove the contaminated gardens. Arnold Hertog kept a video record of the whole operation. First, memories of the flourishing old garden, and then the day in summer 2005, when the bulldozers finally moved in. <coughs> Trees were cut down and the plants ripped out. The tuinen zijn overal tot minstens 75 centimeter afgegraven. Dan is daar een folie gelegd en daar bovenop is eigenlijk teelaarde, goede grond die uitgebreid chemisch is gecontroleerd, is terug aangebracht en dat is grond die eigenlijk zuiver is, waar die kan dienen voor alle. Functies, uh, zowel uh, gras, speelplein als uh, groentetuin eigenlijk. 22,000 soil investigations have now been carried out in Flanders and 2,000 clean-up projects approved. Polluted earth is taken either to landfill sites or to a giant cleaning plant where the soil is filtered and tested before then being reused for industrial projects. There may be as many as three and a half million potentially contaminated sites around Europe. Not every country cares for its soils in the way Flanders now does. Europe's soil is being damaged and degraded at an alarming rate. So now the European Commission is proposing a Europe-wide soil strategy to include new legislation to protect and restore what is essentially a non-renewable resource. We have to protect uh, uh, the soil if uh, we are to protect uh, our health, our water, our food, and the richness of Europe's uh, nature. Our strategy does this in a comprehensive and a holistic uh, way by creating a common legal framework to protect it. The new European directive will require each EU country to prepare an inventory of risks to the soil based on Europe-wide criteria and to draw up prevention and remediation programs. One of the main threats is erosion, and also the serious reduction in organic matter, both made worse by inappropriate farming methods. Salinization is another threat caused by intensive irrigation, which can seriously affect the fertility of the soil. Soil compaction and sealing are a result of heavy traffic and urbanization, and of course, contamination. An impressive soil atlas has been compiled as part of the new protection plan, which charts more than 300 different types of soils in Europe. The computer-generated maps show that large parts of the total land area of the EU are damaged in one way or another. Erosion is the loss of topsoil through rain or wind, but it's made much worse by bad farming practices, such as inappropriate ploughing. In a rainstorm here in Andalusia, 20 tonnes of soil can be washed off just one hectare of land, causing the organic content, the nutrients of the soil, to be lost, and nitrates, phosphates and pesticides run down into the water system. The topsoil is the part that matters most. Once it's gone, it can take several thousand years for just a few centimetres to reform. These days, some Spanish farmers are trying out more environmentally friendly farming practices. Olive trees are interplanted with wheat to preserve the goodness and stabilize the soil. Here, a crop of chickpeas is planted on top of last year's crop residue. Now, even in heavy rain, the soil is no longer being washed away. These are the sort of projects which the European Commission hopes will start to be adopted widely across Europe.
The people in saint amans in Belgium certainly know how precious soil is. They know now that their newly laid gardens are clean and safe. And saving soil is also saving money. The whole five-year programme to replace the contaminated earth in saint amans is costing the Flemish authorities more than 11 million euro. A hefty price tag and the sort of bill the European Commission hopes can be avoided in future once Europe really starts to care for its soil.